All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today, we are gonna eat our first main crop fig. We finally have ripened our first main crop of the year. It is the middle of July, and actually we're about a month behind where I had predicted us to be. And the reason for that is because a lot of the trees that got a greenhouse head start took a lot of sunburn damage when we took them out of the greenhouse. And it just it comes down to the simple fact that there was a lot of trees in the greenhouse, a lot of shading. So the trees at the top of the greenhouse didn't really get any sunburn. The trees lower down did. And when I took them out, even just to move them right outside the greenhouse, um, just one little step right outside that greenhouse, it was too much sunlight and they got burnt. And that sunburn really sets the trees back a bit. Um, a lot of the trees are still kind of on par to where they would be. Um, other trees like this Martinenca Blanca took such a heavy beating that it really had to take its time and grow over the last month, month and a half to then finally put out new fruit buds uh, to then form fruits much later in the season. The same thing with my uh, Pachoto tree really hasn't recovered much at all. Uh, it's kind of sad on some of these cases. Uh, you know, others though, like this brocolette has already ripened to Braba and it's even got some nice main crop. It seems to have kind of put up with the sunburn. It really depends on the varying degree of sunburn that we saw and just how many leaves were on the tree. Um, it would have been probably a good idea to remove any of the fruits that we had on those trees uh, to then encourage it to grow to have more photosynthesis and then set new fruits but I don't know I was getting a little bit greedy with some of these earlier fruits and some of these varieties I really wanted to see them fruit at an earlier date um, now the tree that I was expecting to actually to see fruit uh, actually a month ago so the middle of June was this tree here it's called Campaneri and uh, this tree was definitely on track at the time that it had set fruit buds was on track to actually ripen by june 15th so this tree not only got some sunburn to it um, but it also got blasted by the colds and that was actually prior to the sunburn this was one of maybe two or three trees i think there was about four trees that took some sort of damage but the campanary took a ton of damage and a lot of the new growth actually from that night where the heater didn't kick on in the greenhouse if you guys remember that uh, a lot of that growth actually died and we lost the fruit buds that had formed and i ended up removing a number of fruits like i said to try to encourage the tree to grow and it it somehow came back it came back really strong and all it needed was a, a number of leaves uh, to then grow again and then put out new fruit buds and it actually ended up holding on to some of these older buds these older fruits that had formed and we even have i mean it's kind of ridiculous we even have some doubles on this tree so i kind of think compost tea has something to do with that where we're seeing such spectacular results in a way from that but uh yeah this tree it seems like a you know it just keeps impressing me this particular variety uh, so here's the fruit over here that we're gonna pick let's try this it's been relatively dry here although last night it did end up raining probably a um, quarter of an inch and that's not a lot of rain it's we've been really in a drought uh, but I have been watering my trees way more than I ever have this year uh, I've really made sure because we don't have the water that we normally get um, I have really been on top of the watering this year a lot of that was because again the drought but I really wanted these trees to regrow the ones that got sunburn um, I think I'm gonna pay for it though in terms of the fruit quality so we'll see as we go through this year uh, I just already predicting a lower quality of fruit across the board but who knows? This is a Campaneri that's been dried pretty well. It's kind of ugly, um, but I actually love the coloration on it that gets a little bit gray. It's like a greenish gray, yellow color. And then on the inside, you can tell that this thing, um, yeah, it just didn't 
really have a great time throughout the entire time that this fig was ripening. So from day one that these figs form on the branches, if the tree has enough photosynthesis and energy and there's no problems along the way, well, that's when you get the highest fruit quality possible. But I think because we had such a struggle with this, the early fruits I'm gonna see on that Campanieri probably just won't be that great. But let's try it anyway. Um, I'm sure it's not gonna be bad. Well, you know what? It's still really good. Um, I <laughs> just so happy to have a fig, guys. I'm just so happy to have a fig, I think. This is probably, though, a four out of five if I had to give it a rating. Um, it's been 90 degrees. It's been really warm. Maybe not dry, but definitely we have not had rain. Um, so this is exceptional and i kind of regret because i fear what's going to happen in the season is that we're going to have a lot of figs ripen when it is going to rain and if they could have ripened now or in the last few weeks i would have quality that would rival california the figs would be just as good as california uh without the caprification and so it just it just kind of makes me feel sad a little bit inside <laughs> But it is nice to have a fig right now and to start the season off with, um, you know, this variety. This is a pretty darn good one. We do have some Brabas, I just want to mention, but the Brabas are pretty much over. And I'm very patiently waiting for main crop to ripen. Uh, we do have one Braba over here on the in-grounds. We have two Brabas in total this year of, on the in-grounds. And... Uh, Here's one right here, it's a Moro de Caneva Breba, but we need to wait probably another three days or so. Um, so when it's super, super ripe, because that's just how the Brabas are. Uh, but in any case, in any case, um, the Brabas pretty much were a lot of a letdown on a lot of the potted trees, other than the ones that came out of the greenhouse. And there was a lot of Breba that we had over the, the actually sometime in June um, it's been a while since I had my last fig. Those Brabas that ripened in June, which was, you know, some of the really good standouts, was the Paradiso Bode, Tuale Noir, uh, Brocolette produced a really quality Braba Smith. Um, there are some pretty decent Braba producers for anybody out there, but I'm very happy to be moving on from Brabas and and moving on to the main crop now we have a ton of fruit to ripen this year on the potted trees also really a lot of fruit on the in-ground trees that will ripen really late in the season uh we'll probably focus as you guys will watch my videos throughout the year we'll start here on most of the in-ground or the potted trees excuse me and then i'll be showing you a lot of the in-grounds as we get into September, October, um, and even probably after frost is when um, we'll see even more fruits ripen on these in-ground trees. Just kind of the way it worked out. We do have some early figs that'll show up on this little ruby and also the Ronde de Bordeaux, but that's kind of what I'm expecting. Oh, and even the LSU Huye will have a lot of early figs. Maybe some of the Moro de Caneva. I mean, we'll have some early figs on these in-ground trees, but yeah. A lot of the these trees here, guys, will produce huge quantities of fruit at the end of the season. So that was my point. But anyway, well, I thank you guys here for watching this one. Please hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, figboss.com. Let me know if you liked this up kind of up close and personal view of this little tasting that we did uh anyway guys we'll see you soon take care catch you for the next one